It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Preparing the Atom! Hello, my name is John White. And I am John Black. John Gray. Well, got, uh, okay, um, can y'all like, can you have like a little more enthusiasm with it? You John Gray! I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm done with this. <laughs> and this is not Crash Course. Today we're going to talk about the history of the Atom. First off is Ambedocephalus. Do you mean Empedocles? Empedocles, yes. To start off our journey of the atom, we... Why are you so close, Stetson? Oh, Please, well, well, you but... see, I was trying to make sure we can actually hear you. Wait, I have an idea. Here. Oh, oh, okay, okay, David. Okay, what? I'm good. What is this? It, it, I'm boom mic duty. But that's, that's just a piece of sticks. There's just sticks. I have a dream. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> All right, just... As I was saying, we continue our journey of the atom with Empedocles, ancient Greek scientist and philosopher. He theorized in 440 BCE that the universe is made up of four elements. Next we have Democritus, who was another Greek philosopher and scientist. In 400 BCE, he, th he theorized that everything in our universe is made of small, indivisible particles called atoms. Now we move on to more commonly known Greek, ancient Greek philosopher and scientist, Aristotle. In 347 BCE, he also theorized that everything was made of elements, but he proposed that there was a fifth element called aether. What the frick is aether? We see it's what the divine and heavenly bodies of the sky were made of, such as the stars. This is and stupid, planets. I don't care. He directly opposed the theories of Democritus, causing his theory to be unchecked for the next 2,000 years. Now, much later, we have Italian scientist Evangelista Torricelli, who in 1630, with his invention of the mercury barometer, discovered that air has weight. While doing this, he posed a question. If air has weight, then it must be made of things that have weight, making people think, well, our air must be made of some sort of particles or elements, causing it to have this pressure. Next, in 1738, we got Daniel Bernoulli. <laughs> who believed in his kinetic theory of gases. In this kinetic theory of gases, he described a gas as a large number of sub-microscopic particles, all of which are in constant, random motion. Much like Torricelli, he was proposing that gas has weight, and that it's made up of different kinds of atoms and molecules. In late 1772, Antoine Lavoisier began experimenting with the composition of water to prove an important capstone Was here was going to prove an important capstone in his combustion theory by burning jets of hydrogen and oxygen in a bell jar of mer over mercury. That was here deduced that water is not an element but a molecule that was made of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. This revelation shook the world of science because for the last 2,000 years it was thought that water was a separate element. No one could deny that was here's astounding observations and his experiments regarding the matter. This won him much prestige in the science community just when everyone thought it was over. He came back with his findings regarding mass and how it doesn't change even when a substance has undergone a chemical change. His experiments on this new discovery included carefully weighing reactants and products of a chemical reaction in a sealed glass vessel to ensure that no gas could escape. Lavoisier became the first pioneer of stoichiometry, a huge advancement of chemistry. This new discovery was titled The Law of Conservation of Mass, again changing the face of science forever. How many times do I have to tell you, no more boom mic, no more silly tricks, just finish him! No! I'm sick and tired of all this! Get out of here! Fatality. Two years later, English chemist Joseph Priestley discovered many types of elements and molecules in the air. He found oxygen, nitric oxide, anhydrous hydrochloric acid, ammonia, nitrous oxide, 
and carbon monoxide. His findings would later help the discovery of photosynthesis. And I'm done! That's it from John Gray. I'm out. Hello, I'm John White, if you remember. Today we're going to talk about Joseph Louis Proust. He was born September 26, 1754, in Angus, France, in Angus, France. He also died, though, in July 5th, 1826. Joseph's main contribution for the atom theory was Proust stated the law of the finished proportion. The law states that the ratio of elements in a compound is always the same or constant. He also hinted at the legoness of matter. He believed that matter could be put put together in certain patterns to make bigger, different, and unique matter. One of his main experiments in this was uh, he dem his main demonstrations were, were concerned with the inorganic binary compounds such as metallic You didn't take it It was John Gray that said we could In his main demonstration, he was concerned with the inorganic binary compounds such as metallic oxides, sulfides, and sulfates. Believed that most metallic metals form two distinct oxides, constant proportions, and these turn were capable of producing two separate series of compounds for sulfides. To be, he asserted that there existed only one per metal. Except iron. For all of you curious out there, all this stuff that happened with Mr. Prouse happened around 1974. Today we're going to talk about Mr. John Dalton. Now, Dalton, Mr. John Dalton was born in 1766, Eaglesfield, England. He died in 1844. Dalton Dalton's interest in atmospheric pressure eventually Wait, led to atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure eventually led him to a close examination of gases. While studying the nature of chemicals, make while studying the nature of chemicals makeup of air in early 1800s, he learned that it was not a chemical solvent, as other scientists had believed. Instead, it was a mechanical system composed of smaller individual particles that used pr pressure pressure uh, applied pressure applied to each in gas independently. This gradually led him to formula formally assert that every form of matter was made up of the, made up of individual particles. He got the term atom from the great philosopher Democritus. He created the first chart of the atomic he created the first chart of atomic weights. He also also atom couldn't be atoms couldn't be created or destroyed. He said that atoms came in different sizes of mass. All elements have its own kind of atom. His experiments he did with this he recorded the weather for about 57 years, and he measured different elements. You darn wind! <laughs> this was John Dalton's model of the atom. It was a sphere. They didn't know much back then. It was a sphere. J.J. Thompson, who was born December 18, 1856. He discovered the, the electron by experimenting with a with cathode rays that he showed that cathodes were negatively, were negatively charged. He also studied positively charged particles in neon gases. He made a new model that he compared to the plum pudding. In the plum pudding, the first most of the dough was pretty much the positively charged part. The circles were pretty much to represent as the raisins, and they were the electrons. So that's how we figured out that it was kind of compared to plum pudding, which comically became now known as the plum pudding model. He also discovered that the stable elements can exist as isotopes and invented the mass spectrometer. He did most of all of this around in 1897. Hey yo, I'm John Black. You might have remembered me. I was also the boom my, the boom guy for a little while. Um, but I'll be talking to you about to, uh, today about Mary and Pierre Curie. Um, there were two scientists. Uh, Mary was born uh, November 17, 1867, and uh, died in July 14, 1934. Um, they were looking for uh, elements that, uh, that emitted this weird radiation that one of the other scientists, uh, Henry Berquero, uh discovered. And uh, she was successful later on with, with her husband, uh, Pierre 
Curie, uh, born in 1859 and died in 1906. Um, and they found uh, ra uh, radiation from th uh, thorium, and the amount of radiation is dependent on the amount of, ele of the element in the compound. Um, they, they found radioactivity co uh, comes from the atoms themselves, uh, and not the arrangement of the atoms in the, in the whole uh, molecule. And they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903. Yeah. And just for all of you that are curious, they did most of that in 1903. Magic! I'm also doing Albert Einstein. He was born on March 14, 1879 and died in April 18, 1955. 1955. 1955. 1905 was a really good year for him. Um, he ex explained the equivalence of mass and energy in his famous equation E equals mc squared, which was used in a bunch of different experiments uh, to help prove the existence of atoms and uh, how to manipulate atoms. And also in 1905, he mat mathematically proved the existence of atoms. Um, he even split an atom uh, that was used in an atomic bomb. So Albert Einstein is really, really awesome. Robert Milken! He was born on March 22nd, 1868. Around the years of 1908 through 1970, he accurately determined the charge carried by electrons using the ele elect elegant falling drop method. He also proved that this quantity was, a cons was consistent for all electrons. The way Robert Milken did all of these wonderful things is he used his oil drop experiment. In a chamber, an atomizer sprays a mist of oil droppers into a top portion of the chamber. With gravity, some of the oil, some of the oil drops fall through a small hole. When the space between the plates is ionized by radiation, electrons from the air, electrons from the air attach themselves to falling oil droplets, making them negatively charged. The mass of a single ch charged droplet can be calculated by exact by observing how fast it falls. Anis Rafafat, a man in the making. He was born 1871 in New Zealand, Zealand. He died in 1937. In 1911, he makes the model as a tiny, dense, positively charged core called a nucleus and negative constitutes called electrons circulate at some distance around the nucleus. For him to figure this out, his experiment was performed by Ernest Marsden under the direction of Ernest Rutherford and Han Gregor in 1905. 1909, I apologize, Miss Portwood. Though if Rutherford thought if he shot, okay, man, he thought if he shot high-velocity alpha particles at an atom, then there there would be a very little to deflect the alpha particles. He tested this with a thin film of gold atom. As present, as expected, most particles went right through the gold foil, but a few particles rebounded almost directly backwards. This helped prove Rutherford's theory. Kinda. Rutherford's model of the atom! As you can see, he drew this thing we call the nucleus. And now you see it rotates at some distance around. And these wonderful little dots on the ends those are the electrons. As you know, they rotate around the nucleus. And this is how Rutherford perceived things. Now we're going to talk about Niels Bohr up in this house. All right, so he was born on the 7th of October in 1885. Now it's in Copenhagen, Denmark. Now he died 18, 18th of November in 1962. In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed a theory for the hydrogen atom based on quantum theory. 
The energy is transferred only in certain and well-defined quality quantities. Electrons should move around the nucleus, but only in prescribed orbit. Now, if we take it like here and we look at this model, David, get up and record this crap. Now, if you look at this stuff right here, we got a little thing because it prescribes the orbits about the net energy that is in between each orbit. Now, we see this right here. Get you going, homie. Go, go, go. Now, we saw that we have the one n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, the increasing energy orbits. A phantom, a, a photon is emitted with energy E equals H E F. Thank God I finally finished that stupid research. All right, so Louis de Broglie in Paris in night, he was born August 15th, 1892 in France. In March of 1987, at Paris, in Paris, he died. In 1924, he developed the theory of electron waves. That's meaning that electrons move in waves as they rotate around the nucleus. This is the reason you can't pinpoint where the, the electron is when it's rotating. Hey, it's John Black again. Uh, you probably remember me. I actually have... Heisenberg this time. Werner Heisenberg to be exact. Okay, he was born December 5th, 1901 and died February 1st, 1976. And he didn't really do much. He's, he, um, he calculated the behavior of atoms after discovering the uncertainty theory, uh, which basically meant that the electrons don't go in the same path often. And uh, he also included quantum mechanics to uh, into the atomic theory and that revolution that revolutionized a lot of different things so hello guys I'm Mr. Yellow today we're going to talk about Erwin Schrodinger yeah that's what it is he was born August August 12 1887 in Vienna Austria he died the 4th of January 1961 Vienna Austria good for him in 1926, Schrodinger used mathematical equations to describe the likelihood of finding an electron in a certain position. This atomic model is known as the quantum mechanical model of atoms. This model does not define the exact path of an electron, but does predict the origin of the location of the electron. I'm out of here. You still record for. Alright, guys, today we're going to talk about De Broglie. Is that how you say his name? I think so, yeah. And Schrodinger. Is that how you say his name? I have no idea. Alrighty then. Now, as you see right here, this is the nucleus. Can you give me a hand here, pal? I can't really point. But this is the nucleus. Yeah, 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 I know that. I just want you to point. You don't have to talk. This is the nucleus. This is the middle of the atom. And as you can see, the electron, you keep pointing the electron. Okay. The electron travels in waves, to travel up the waves, around the, the nucleus in a prescribed orbit around the atom. Now, as you can see, now the reason that de Broglie and uh, Schwarzenegger have pretty much the same model is because they were solving the same thing. You, you can stop opening the atom. Oh, okay. So, yes, that is the reasoning. D -d 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 get out of my way, I'm leaving. Okay, sorry. Man. Hello, it's Sean Black again. This time I have Michael Faraday, born September 22nd, 1791, and died August 25th, 1867. Hello. Um, anyways, uh, Basically what he did is he placed two electrodes in, in water with a compound of, uh, of, yeah. Anyways, so he observed that element uh, elements like basically stripped away from one electrode and deposited on, on the other electrode. Uh, so he discovered electrolysis and how th th there's electricity involved and how, how atoms can strip, or elements <laughs> 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 can strip... <laughs> Um, how elements can uh, 
atoms can strip electrons from one thing from one thing and deposit it to other atoms. And that's basically what he discovered. You are okay, last one. I have James Ch Chadwick, born October twentieth, eighteen ninety one, and died Ju July twenty fourth, nineteen seventy four. Basically, what he discovered was the neutron. Uh, he discovered it in nineteen thirty two. Uh, based off of the thoughts of Ernest uh, R Rutherford. Um, basically, what they discovered was that the atomic number was half of the atomic weight, so they knew that there must be something else there other than the proton and the electron. And the, the electron doesn't weigh anything, so they're trying to figure out what, what must be there. Um, but James Chadwick went on a mission. He decided to go look for, for this new unknown little thing that wasn't a proton that also weighed something. So... Um, he, he eventually was successful, and he discovered that the neutron's mass is actually 0.1% more than the protons in, in the, um, in the, uh, thing, the atom. Yeah, okay. And that's basically what he discovered, so. What? Who's flickering what? the lights? Nosferatu! Hello, this has been Not Crash Course. Thank you for sitting through this video. Yes, congratulations for getting through this entire video. If you did so, you have no life. Unless you are a uh, teacher, Miss Portwood. Uh, if you are, I, we're, I'm very sorry you had to sit through this and watch all of this insane stupidity. But if you notice, the video is about that much long. So, this, so I mean, you could probably like maybe give us a hundred, but you know, life is full of choices. Yeah. Like that potential hundred you could give our project. And also, special thanks to Mr. Yellow for being part of our part of our video. And yes, Brennan, I said yellow, not Yolo. Don't you touch me! No animals were harmed in the making of this film. Well, I thought they could be like out. Okay, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, sir. Special thanks to Brendan Jones. Stetson Lanier and David Ross for directing this video. This whole idea kit was brought to us by Stetson Lanier, Brendan Jones, David Ross. Special thanks to Brendan Jones for providing the camcorder and the editing. Special thanks to Stetson Lanier for providing a lot of the models, a lot of the funny ideas, and his stupidity. And the set. Oh, and the set. I mean, you know what we have. I mean, we had we had my room. I'm the best for this project. Also, special thanks to Brendan for for helping with the lighting. Yes. If you notice, we had some nice lighting there, and you know, we we had some budget cuts, but I mean, we we tried. We'd like to congratulate David for uh, not dying from his sickness. Yeah, his Ebola. His yeah. Ebola. Because if you notice, he wasn't there in class like all week, so mm -hmm. he almost died. Mm -hmm. But he's here now. Yep. You go take some blood. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Miss Portwood. Bye. 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 In late teens, I said late teen. <laughs> Are you gonna mess up, bro? You gonna mess up? I got this. Are you mess up? I got this. Are you sure? I got this. You sure? Mm -hmm. Apparently, you didn't four. All right. <laughs> That'll be a good blooper, though. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> One, go. Hello, my name is John Bl <laughs> When you kept that for more, right? Um, I'm keeping it, yeah. This is going in. That's it. That was Yeah, we just take a leave. That trick! Come on, Brandon. Get it on there. The wind. <laughs> Me. <Need> Skills. <laughs> Go. Mr. J. J. Thompson. He was born December 18, 1856, and he died August 30th, 1940. Mr. J. J. Thompson, in 1897, discovered the electron with experimenting with cook with. Stop it, seriously.
Et tu brute. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't you, it wasn't you. I just could do it for the vines. Come on, man. Give me a Coke can, please. <laughs> Four. I missed. <laughs> Let me try that again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed. Touch. I, <laughs> I missed. I got it. <laughs> and also in 1905, uh, uh, they expl he explained the equivalence of mass and energy uh, in his famous equation E equals MC squared, uh, which was used in many different. Um, uh, and we're out. Okay, also have Albert Einstein, born in match. Match. Yay! Okay, okay, so I also have Albert Einstein, born March 14th, 1879, and died in 18, April 18th, 1955. Uh, he wrote about relativity and its influence, and 1905 was a really good year for him. Uh, it, they, blah. He proved. <laughs> yeah. Fails. Yeah. Relativity. What? Jump out of bomb. What? What? And Japan was no more. 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 That is very. Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> Arigato. Hori Mr. Sayonara Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Atom bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An invigorating game is going on here at the front in the back of my backyard. It's a very simple game. It, 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 uh, what, what's the point of this? Yeah, this guy's got like a really easy explanation, but he's got a long butt experiment. Open up your head and let it flow into me. And it actually like be able to be seen. Focusing. <laughs> Focusing. Oh, no, this. Focusing. Robert Milken. Yeah, there's a bug on the screen. It's terrifying. <laughs> there's a bug on the screen. <laughs> 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 Robert Milken did to do with all of these things he said he did. He used this beautiful method right here, the falling oil drop method. In this thing, he in a chamber and at at atmosphere. You see, it focused. Yeah. Now, my life on deep get turned upside down. I don't know the word, but you know this is about how we kind of made a video. I guess it's kind of stupid. Word up. Revolutionized a lot of different things, so. Uh. Yeah. That's. <coughs> he didn't do much, so. It's kind of hard to whip. <laughs> David. Wait, I have one more to go. You should record the puppet and I'll talk. Wait, what? The puppet should do with the last one. Or like the, the last one I gotta do. What? Who's flickering what? the lights? No, it's That's for red uh, to... <laughs> ...the nucleus. This is the reason you can't pinpoint where the 